First Kings chapter 19, verses 3 to 7. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough now. Lord, take my life for I am no better than my fathers. Then, as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked and saw, and there by his head was cake baked on coals and the jar of water. So he ate and drank, and lay down again. And then the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, lift yourself up, eat, because the journey is too great for you. We glorify you, Lord. We praise you for your holy name, for the existence in your presence, that you are already in communion with you. We ask that you may speak to us through your word and your church. We pray. In Jesus' holy name, amen. The brother may be seated. Elijah is well known for being the man because he defied 800 800 and more than 800 prophets that serve Jezebel and in that and when that happened there when when he went against the other prophets he was the winner he was victorious in that day he did something that was extraordinary in Israel. He, he made all the people of Israel say that only the Lord is God because that, that day many people were confused and they had no idea what God to serve. And so Elijah went there and he showed that his God the God of Elijah was the true God. That he responds with fire. And so, when me, when you, when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, we are baptized with fire. Because he responds with fire. And Elijah, the, he was this prophet, this man of God. But it came to a time that the servant of the Most High that was able to go against many prophets and Pharisees, it came a time that because of a word, he was he got up to run away. He got up to. He wanted. To, he wanted. He ran for his life. And so we see the attitudes of this servant of the Lord. The word of the God said that he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba. It means the, the stop of the judgment, the stop of the alliance. There was somewhere that was made there for Abraham and when he would, would go to the land of the, the Philistines and where the servants of Abimelech 
the king of the Philistines had that post for him. And so when Abraham went there, he made a pact and a lines, and he gave seven, seven girl lambs. And in that pact with those seven girl lambs, Abimelech, that, that stop, he returned it back to Abraham. And so it became known as the stop of the judgment, the, the stop of the alliance, which belonged to Abraham. And the Bible says that when Abraham had that stop, that, that, that post, he, he did two things. He planted and he praised the name of the Lord in that place. So there, there was food, and then there, there was water, and because of the food and the water, he would be there praising the Lord there every day until this day, and that, and that was exactly the place in which he ran to. That's exactly where he went. The, the post of the the pact, the post of the alliance. And it says, Abraham he is the type, of the type of the father, the celestial father, in the land of the Philistine, which is this world. He established. He established a place of the pact, a place of the judgment. He established two things in this place: food, water, so that man could be able to praise the Lord's name every single day. So it was a pact of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the food, the water, and the judgment, the place of the Trinity. But it was exactly in this place in which Abraham would praise the name of the Lord, where there was food, where there was the water, to satisfy your thirst, in which he resolved to leave his friend. He wanted to continue alone. Walk us two together if, if we were in communion. It was in Beersheba, the place of the, of the food in which they put the food. The place where he left. The project. He acted alone. There's a text in the Bible that says the one who he isolates. He Those that isolate, they cannot be substituted. A citizen, a servant of the Lord, he wanted to walk alone and he couldn't do it. And so he goes, he leaves everything. And he goes to the desert. He leaves the place to praise the Lord. He leaves the place where there's food. And he goes to the desert. So there's two things. Anguish, affliction, suffering. There's no water. There's no food. There's no shade. Because what he wanted, he thought it would be better this way. The citizen here, the the brother, he was he was tired, he was frustrated, he was not happy. He had low self-esteem. He's a servant of God. Someone said that they're gonna take my life. A servant of God is always in the persecution with so many problems. I'm tired. I want to give up. 
There's a song that says, How could I forsake this great love? There's another one that says, Who can separate us from the love of God? And so now, the brother was in this situation. He goes to the desert. And he walks for one day. One day. He only he could only walk for one day. David, King David, he says, "Better one day in your presence than a thousand in another. Better one day in the presence of the Lord." Because God, what He has for me and you, it's one day, an eternal day. It's a project that has no end. But that citizen, he, for one day, he couldn't handle it. He had to go away. And after one day of being away, the Bible says that that then came the affliction and the battle. Sometimes we say that depression is something new, but this is the old depression right here. And depression came. He walked for a day. And then the word says that he sat down under a broom tree. He could not walk anymore. He was tired. He was frustrated. Anguished. Sad. The word said after a day's journey in the wilderness, he came and sat down under a broom tree to go away a little bit from the sun and try to get in the shade and try to get away from the affliction that he was going through. And then he said, it is enough. He asked, he asked him to die. When the person asked to die, you know that it is complicated. He asked to die. Oh Lord, I cannot take this anymore. But brethren, the word of the Lord says that that I never saw a just not be taken care of. It says, we said, I sang the song here that said, pray to me and I'll answer. That citizen, he was so unhappy that he didn't even pray. There is nothing says here in the Bible that he prayed that day that he prayed to the Lord. He was unhappy. He was tired. He was depressed. He went under a broom tree and just sat there. He asked to die. And the prayer he made was to take his life. I am not better than my father's. That was the prayer he made to the Lord. And the word says that he laid and then slept. He, he gave up. Look, there's no more way. I cannot do anything else. I can't even get up. Lord, take me because the situation is not good here. I'm no better than my father's. The word says that he laid and slept under the broom tree. The tree talks about man and man's reasoning, about what I think and what I establish, what I plan. And the word says that when he was completely alone, a lot of times we think, I'm alone. 
I'm gonna run away. I'm gonna hide to a place that no one's gonna see me. But there's a word that says, there's a song that says, you are not alone. There's a, a song that says, if you're with the Lord, there he also will be. If you take the wings, until there you will be sustained. God does not abandon man. And that servant in that, in that place, in that moment, God never abandoned him. Today showed a lady that was in a similar situation. And maybe, sister, you think that you were alone. But you were not alone. The Lord is taking care of you because you are special to Him. You are a servant of the Lord and you are special to the Lord. And the word says that when He was there, an angel touched Him. The angel didn't talk to Him. He, the angel touched Him. Touch me, Jesus. Touch me, Jesus. He, of peace he filled my, my heart. He felt the touch of the Lord. He felt the presence of the Lord. He, he felt the Lord's hands there for his benefit. It was an angel that was there that was sent to touch, to awaken him, to talk to Elijah and tell him to get up. E Elijah. How many times did the Lord say this to me, to you, to the sister that is here tonight? The Bible says that the Lord talks once and twice, and sometimes we are not even awakened. And the angel went there to awaken. Arise in thee, Elijah. E Elijah. Brother, and when Elijah woke up, the food was already there prepared for him. Before you woke up this morning, the Lord already provided the food for your soul because the blessings are new every single day. Before you even woke up, before you even were born, God had already provided the project to rescue, to save, to cure, to bring you up, to make you stand, to provide you the path, to direct you, to show you that your destiny is not somewhere else, and it is not in this world, that you are not going to die under a broom tree, and that God has something much bigger for your life. And in a place that no one else can hear it, pray to me and I will respond, because I have great things. He was not seen, and that is why he was sad. But God had a project for Elijah's life. He would not die that day. Brethren, you are not going to die today. No one here is going to die today. No one's going to die in the desert. Because a servant of the Lord does not die in the desert. A servant of the Lord does not die. Did you know that the servant of the Lord does not die? Elijah didn't die. Elijah passed through death and lived. And that was the project that the Lord had for him. He said that he was going to die. And no, you're not going to die, Elijah. You're going to be raptured. The Lord will come to get you. The horses of fire, the chariot. And the Lord said to Elijah, Arise and eat. 
You know what Elijah did? He didn't arise. All he had to do was look. He didn't, he didn't arise. He just looked. And when he looked, he saw two things. There was cake baked on coals and a jar of water. Brethren, we have to look for the cake baked on coals. Look at the jar of water. Jesus is the bread of life. He is the live bread that came from the heavens to cure, to cure anything that you have to bring up the Saturn. There's a project of God in place. The bread baked on coals is there, Elijah. The response of your necessity is this cake baked on coals. Jesus, my brother and my sister, he is, he is our answer. Jesus is the project of God that he fulfills the life of man. He fulfills it with cake and water, with food. There is, there is food to take his hunger away, and there is water to fulfill his thirst. And the love God went there to fulfill his thirst, to show that him, God, has food, he has the bread of life from Jesus. And the Lord is saying tonight that the cake baked on coals is present. The jar of water is present. The Holy Spirit is present. The project of God is present. And he looked, and there by his head, it was next to his head. Next to his head. The head talks about the govern, the government, a governing body that is there to to give understanding, to give Elijah understanding. Sometimes we are a little lost, only looking at the difficulties, but we don't know that we have a God that is taking care of our lives, that is providing all things. A God that is our pastor, and that nothing, nothing will we need more. And then he ate and drank, but then he lay down again. If no one has gone through this, I have gone through this. I have ate, I have drank, and then I laid down. That was my first experience. You ate, you drank, you experimented the plan, the project of God. You experienced the great love of God. But many times we experience this, we live this, but we are not cured right away. Jesus went to cure the man, but to but to resolve his problem, he had to pray for him twice. Because the first time he he prayed, but it was like he was seeing nothing, like he was seeing trees. He was he was blind, but but the man is is not a tree. He went. He took the things off his eyes. And then he prayed for him, and then he asked, now what do you see? And then he said he saw everything. And that is the process of salvation. You are going through a process, a reconstruction of your spiritual life. He was, he was not good. He was not doing well. There was a difficulty. There was a 
a sense and so of, of life and oppression. I'm trying to take Elijah's life away, trying to make him give up on life. Many people these days are giving up on their life. In the northern part of Brazil, the northeast, and there's a friend called Dead or Dead, Dead Alive, where he's where he has to go away because he cannot take it away because he has so much affliction and anguish and many times man is like this Elijah was like this brother my sister if you came here tonight angels touching you God is insisting with you God insisted with Elijah the angel didn't go away The angel didn't leave the the cake baked on coals and the jar of water and went away because the angel of the Lord, he makes camp. He camps and he takes us away from our things. He was there to take care of Elijah so that no, no bad thing could take his life away from the Lord. The angel is here tonight. He's here to take care of your life and to take care of all your own necessities. To touch you, to tell you, my sister, my brother, eat, drink, get up. And when he laid down again, he wanted to give up again. And so the angel went there again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So the Lord was saying to that, to that man, Look, you, you're going through a difficult moment, but your journey is too great. The project of the Lord is, is still big for your life. You can arise, eat, drink the cake, Eat the cake, drink Jesus, the water. Be with the Holy Spirit because He wants to walk with you. Arise because the journey is too great. And brethren, the word says that that man, he went to, to a cave. He, went. he returned to God. But when he returned, he returned to be into a cave. God didn't call a servant of the Lord to live in a cave. We are not a man, a caveman or a cave woman. The Lord took us away from the darkness to take us into his glory. And in the cave, in Mount Oreb, there was a wind, there was fire, and nothing took, there was nothing there. There was no one talking there. People talking doesn't take you away from the cave. The wind goes. The solution. We'll see in a little bit. It's not an earthquake. It's a shake. I'm going to shake right here. There's, there's no one else. There's no one else in the cave. The fire. Five hundred degrees of fire and power, but there was no one in that cave. And the word says that that the Lord was not in that wind. He was not in that fire. 
And so, brethren, Elijah knew this. Elijah knew this. He had discernment. A servant of the Lord has to have discernment. And then he heard a voice, and it is a voice that speaks to us tonight. A delicate voice. That is the voice of the, of the, of the Lord. you have not left us alone you have helped us you have helped us with all our necessities you have touched our lives you have spoken to us in a special way we praise you because you have put in us you have put us standing up we have taken us away from the night the darkness and you have taken us away from the cave we thank you for your marvelous grave. We glorify you for your holy name because through Jesus, our, we know that our destiny is not to die here, but it is to have our heart for you. We pray you for this instance, for this time of communion with you. We glorify you, Lord. We, we hope that this offering may reach your altar. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. And in your name we say that the marvelous grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ our, our good Savior, the eternal blessings of the Holy Spirit be with your people now and forever. Amen. Church may be seated. 
Our service is now finished. You that are here with us tonight, you are welcome in the house of the Lord. We have services on Tuesday, Thursday, at 8, at night, on Saturday, the ladies' service, at 6, and then 7.30 of service, and then Sunday morning, 10.30, and Sunday afternoon. Sunday evening, 6.15, there's the service for the youth, and then 7.30, we have another service at night. You are invited to participate in any of these services. If you would like a prayer for your life, if you would like something to be explained to you, we ask that you lift your hands so that we may pray for you, so we can explain anything to you, so you can have your deserved assistance. We'd like to say again that the Lord showed a lady that came here and she was sad and anguish for this difficult time she has passed in her life. But she was here tonight and the Lord's hands are reaching out to her and that everything would be changed and that tonight she would go away from death and all the sadness would be go away and would be reprimanded in the name of Jesus. After the assistance, uh, we're going to have a meeting with Group B. Thank you. 